And so once again, my dear Johnny, my dear friend, and so once again, you are fighting us all. And when I ask you why, you raise your sticks and cry, and I fall, oh, my friend, how did you come to trade the fiddle for the drum? You say I have turned like the enemies you've earned. But I can remember all the good things you are. And so I ask you, please, can I help you find the peace and the star? Oh, my friend, what time is this to trade the handshake for the fist? And so once again, oh, America, my friend, and so once again you are fighting us all and when we ask you why you raise your sticks and cry and we fall oh my friend how did you come to trade the fiddle But we can remember all the good things you are And so we ask you please Can we help you find the peace and the star? Oh my friend We have all come to fear the
Good evening and welcome to our online listening party for the album This Land, a beautiful new record by the Westerlies and Theo Blackman. I'm John Schaefer, host of WNYC's New Sounds, and uh, I've been actually quite happy to have this record a little bit ahead of time and play some of it on the air. But this evening, we're going to get a chance to find out a little bit about the project and hear some of the music from the record. And the Westerlies and Theo are going to give us a live performance of one of the tracks from this land as well. Let me introduce you to the members of the band. The, uh, the trumpeters are Riley Mulherker and uh, Chloe Rowlands. Uh, the trombonists are Andy Clausen and Willem de Cook. And uh, then, of course, there is the redoubtable Theo Blackman himself on vocals. Mm -hmm. And Theo and Riley, I'm going to start with the two of you. Tell me how this collaboration first came together. Um, I, sorry, go ahead, Riley. Oh, I was just, I was just going to say, I'm so curious to hear uh, what how Theo think so that it coming together because the four of us were such longtime fans of of Theo and his work um so when our world suddenly collided and we had the opportunity to come together it was a really it was a dream come true for us because we had you know been to I think some of my earliest shows in New York I remember going out with Andy hearing uh Theo sing um his projects groups like John Hollenbeck's group um and, and being such a fan um but Theo what do you I think, remember about our early I moments? remember getting a record from your manager, something very random. And I was like, oh, what? okay, uh, I'm going to listen to this. And I plopped it in and I started, like tears were coming down because it was, the sound was, I just remember the sound was just going right to my heart. I just couldn't believe it. I was like, how is this a brass quartet? Like, this yeah. makes no sense at all. And then... I think you reached out uh, to do a project of, about with songs. Like you asked a bunch mm -hmm. of singers to contribute songs, and if I was interested, and that's um, how we started, you know, sort of having contact and started yeah. to work on a piece that's actually on this record. Which and meanwhile, I think what was going on in the rest of the world was that was all in no. October, November, and December of 2016. So I think the origin of how we came together was really, you know, it was it was parallel to everything going on in this country. And as a result, I, I think what drew us together was very much how we related to music and Theo's sonic approach and what we were trying to go for sonically. But then, you know, we all found ourselves as artists in this new uh, Trump era. And so I think what ended up coming together was a combination of those things. So was the intent to create an album of protest and resistance, or was that simply a response to what was happening as, as you began the collaboration? Yeah, the latter. So after we <clears throat> rehearsed this uh, song, uh, Another Which Holiday. Song was that? Another, another Holiday. holiday. Okay. Um, we sat down, uh, I think we, we had... Um, we met here at, at, down in the financial district for a beer or two or, or three or 10. And um, <laughs> we, were just, we were just talking about what can we do? Eat, what can we do as musicians to feel that we we're doing something other than just playing our music as we normally would? Um, and so we sat together and thought, what would, we, what would it be like if we made a... a, a a pol politically tinged or a, a a record of songs that deal with protest or with something akin to that but that's actually really seductive and really just you know just beautiful and something you want to listen to and not the aggressive over the uh, over the head hammer kind of method that we often think about protest song because of the anger in it but um something that actually lures you in and has a little bit of a softer quality perhaps mm. Um, and so we, we thought, you know what, let's, let's try this. Let's take a stab at it. Well, one of the songs, Riley, that's, that's on the album, and I was kind of surprised to, to see this, was Look for the Union Label, because I am old enough to remember TV commercials of people <laughs> singing, look for the Union Label, you know. It's, so 
what's the backstory? First of all, look for the union label as a song slash jingle is one of those earworms, you know, that I still remember mm -hmm. from being a kid because it's very similar to a, an old popular song as well. Yes. What's the, uh, what is this song doing here on this record? <laughs> That's a good question. And, and I'm, I'm going to give part of that question to Theo because it's Theo's incredible arrangement that brought it to life. But um, after we worked on that first initial song together, we really got along so well as collaborators, as friends, we really became close. And we had the opportunity to go up to Putney, Vermont and stay in residency at Yellow Barn, um, a wonderful, one, wonderful institute that supports things like this, new collaborations. We didn't really know what we were gonna get into. Um, but Theo and Andy and I were all homestayed together. So we were all living in the same house and I remember, you know, we were in this process of digging up old American songs um, and trying to write new songs or reinterpret uh, songs past. And a lot of that had to do with protest songs, but also there was a sort of element of American nostalgia and trying to flip it on its head and play with it in a musical sense and in a conceptual sense. And I remember Theo freaking out one night because he had rediscovered that video on YouTube and he was like, and you know, I was like working at the piano and he like ran over and he was like, look at this, look at this. We have to find a way uh, to do this. But, but Theo, I don't know if you want to speak to, uh, how it fits in, you know? Yeah. I mean, the, uh, obviously it's, it's, you know, a, a union labor song, but I wanted to find something that, that where in the source material was not high art, where it was very, uh, almost kitschy or, uh, sort of, just uh, a pedestrian kind of stuff and this was a tv commercial like you said and when we play this everyone over 50 over 45 maybe they all can sing along it's just yeah. amazing how it's like the cars for kids or something like that of, of their time <laughs> um and i just wanted the source material to be something else i'd wanted it to be um you know just mundane sort of like you know, you could you could find it on TV. Pop yeah. song. Well, yeah. at, and the original, I mean, I, I used the word jingle before because the version we all know and very few of us love, it, it's kind of a jaunty little thing, you know, but you've done, you've gone somewhere different with it. Yeah, I took it to a darker place, especially since it's uh, transitioning on the record into uh, Wade in the Water. Um, and I sort of wanted it to, this, this em, em, emphatic American spirit behind it. I wanted to sort of sort of frown at it a little bit and, mm. and sort of question it. Um, there's a, this, a modulation and it gets bigger and bigger, and yet it just gets darker and darker at the same time. So that's sort of the idea behind it. <clears throat> underneath, underneath it all is the idea for the song that um, we should support American labor, which um, you know, is kind of ironic because that's completely gone in the in the garment industry now. Yeah. So um, it's kind of it's it is very nostalgic, as yeah. Riley said. Uh, it is. It was the official song of Ilgu, the uh, International Ladies Garment Workers Union. Mm -hmm. Um, and we're going to hear and, and watch the music video for this uh, arrangement by the Westerlies and Theo Blackman of Look for the Union Label. And we'll talk a bit more after that. And I also want to give you folks who are watching a chance to ask some questions. So uh, wherever you are on YouTube or Facebook, if you have a question, post it. We'll see if we can get to it during the hour. But right now, here is uh, the version that appears on the album This Land of look for the human, uh, <laughs> I was gonna say, look for the human label. Uh, <laughs> is, look for the union label. <laughs>
thanks to the ILG, we're paying, paying our way. So always look for the union label. It says we're able. There used to be more of us in the International Ladies Garment Workers Union, but a lot of our jobs have disappeared. A lot of the clothes Americans are buying for women and kids are imports. They're being made in foreign places. When the work's done here, we can support our families and pay our taxes and buy the things other Americans make. That's what it means when the label says union. Look for the union label. When you are buying a coat dress or blouse, remember some. Well, there you have uh, the Westerlies and Theo Blechman and their take on Look For, the union label and the video, even incorporating that old commercial from way back when. Um, we should thank uh, Julia Barrett Mitchell, the videographer and director who has uh, done yeoman work with the, the visuals for the, um, the music by Theo Blechman and the Westerlies. That is a track from the new album called This Land. Now, Theo, you mentioned before that this project came together with the five of you working on one of your pieces called Another Holiday. Mm -hmm. This is one of the works that we broadcast on New Sounds about a week or two ago. I, I find this to be one of the most compelling yet melancholy pieces on, on the whole record. Um, what is, it's almost like, do you know uh, Samuel Barber's piece, Knoxville, Summer of 1950? Yeah, of course, yes. It almost sounds like a kind of darker shadow after image of that sort of Americana scene. Whoa. I'm going to put that quote on my website. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's an honor. Um, I really appreciate it. Um, this song was, uh, I wrote this song in one sitting, which I normally never do. Uh, I labor and I fix and fuss. And uh, I just sat down one day and this was shortly after the pulse nightclub shooting and it just that song just came out and um it sort of it it really felt that um that at that time and still that yeah we have you know gay marriage and all that stuff or we have somewhat acceptance within our circles but really when you go back to your hometown or your parents or your family then being in an interracial marriage or being gay or being trans or whatever it is is that that's when the problem really arises and it becomes a problem and so i wanted to write a song about that that you are you know not really who you can be uh when you're with your with your family when you go back home 
So holidays become this kind of fraught. I mean, there's all kinds of jokes about going home for Thanksgiving and, you know, the crazy uncle with the political views you don't want to. But in fact, it is, you know, part of the American experience for many people. Yeah. Um, um, When you originally wrote the song, what kind of sound world did you have in mind? I I recorded it for myself with me playing piano and some uh, voices, just a background voices and sort of uh, some, you know, so echoey uh, background vocals. And that's it. And then that song was there. And I was like, what am I going to do with this? It's nice. But and so I sent a whole list to the Westerlies of songs, one hipper than the next. (laughs) And then there was that one stuck in and it just took five minutes and said, we want to do another holiday. I was like, really? This just has two chords in it. Um, So that was lovely. uh, Well, the the arrangement, simple though it may be, is just it's absolutely glowing, you know, with this, you know, kind of twilight uh, sound that the combination of two trumpets and two trombones can do so well. And um, it just, the reason I asked what you originally had in mind is I I can't imagine this song any other way. You know, Mm -hmm. it just, it seems to work so well. Um, Shall we hear it? Yeah. It's called Another Holiday, written by Theo Blackman. He's the singer. And the band, of course, is the Westerlies. And this is from their collaborative record called This Land. Another holiday It's barbecue and pie The kids will run around And I'll sit on the side The shopping is above Of course I'll have Clean it up Another holiday It's gray and cold outside I'm turning off the news Wait, I'll sit on this side I haven't told them yet I promise that I will at another holiday With barbecue and pie We'll be a family then And you'll be by my side Our kids will run around I'm sure they'll understand That love is just the same When they will see your smile They'll love you like their own Every other
That when any holiday Has barbecue and pie How could it be the same Without you by my side And as I'm growing have passed me by I want just one holiday I want just one holiday Just one Just one The song's called Another Holiday. You'll find it on the new album, This Land, by the Westerlies and Theo Blackman. Theo wrote that song. And um, beautiful track from this, uh, this new record by the, uh, the quintet of singer and four brass players. And Andy, um, brass quintets are a common sight and sound in the music world. A brass quartet without a tuba somewhat less so uh what 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 had the four how did the four of you settle on this instrumentation it it's funny funny you ask that that is probably the most common question we get is where's the tuba or where's the french horn <laughs> and the truth of it is we didn't really set out to form a brass band we were friends uh the original four members of the group we're all from Seattle. We were childhood friends and then found ourselves in New York and in our early college years decided to get together and start playing music together more out of a shared friendship and musical interest than out of the fact that we all happen to play brass instruments. So we mm. always joke that if we had played guitar, bass, drums and sang, we would have been a rock band, but we got stuck with brass instruments. <laughs> well, it's worked we out try, pretty well. We try to carry that mentality. Right, right. So it is a band, uh, you know, that can play a wide variety. I mean, I think I first heard the Westerlies when you were doing, uh, you mentioned Seattle, some of Wayne Horvitz's music. Um, Wayne, a former fixture on the new music scene here in New York, but a longtime resident of Seattle these days. And uh, you guys did a great version of his uh, Waltz for Woman of Tokyo, one of his silent film scores that I... I liked quite a lot. Thank you. Great um, memory, Tom. Yeah. But the um, the piece we're going to hear next, Andy, this is one of yours, right? Tell us, uh, it's the closest thing the album has to a title track. It's simply called Land, and it is a song in that there are words to be set. So uh, explain a little bit of the backstory of Land. Sure. So this, this is a piece that I wrote when we were in residence up in Putney, Vermont at Yellow Barn. And um, in, in that residency, we were, as Theo mentioned, accumulating songs from throughout American history from various different protest movements, but also writing new music to sort of respond to the present day. And I am not a lyricist by any means, so I decided to turn to great, great poets, great wordsmiths. And I was speaking to a friend of mine who is a poet, and she recommended I explore this poet, Agha Shahid Ali's work. And I came across this poem that is called Land. And there was a line in it that really resonated with me. And it was, the hour has come to redeem the pledge. And that lyric sort of sparked this whole piece. And I ended up sort of building the whole piece around that phrase. But... In 2017, 2018, it really felt like, as it does today, there is much work to be done. And we as Americans and we as artists have to redeem the pledge we have taken to this society to do better. Mm -hmm. And so this piece is trying to uh, express that in music. And 
I, I just fell in love with Agha's work and all of the words in this are so resonant. Um, and I, I will let them speak for themselves. But all right. that's where it comes from. So the song is Land. The text is by Aga Shahid Ali, but the music is by Andy Clausen. And uh, do you arrange this or is that a collaborative thing among the four Westerlies? How does that work? Um, our arranging process is very much collaborative. So I brought in <clears throat> essentially a sketch that was pretty rough. And then we go through this long and often tedious process of trying a bunch of different ideas. And we have this rule that every idea that people toss into the cauldron has to be tried. Um, so we try every idea, even if it's a bad idea. And that often results in unexpected uh, solutions, unexpected territory that we wouldn't find any other way. But yeah. we find it's worth the time. Very Brian Eno-esque, the idea that, uh, you know, there were no bad ideas, you're in the studio, anything you commit to tape has to be used somehow, and, you know, sometimes the bad idea can lead to an unexpected solution. Very much a band process as well, to go back to what you were saying a minute ago. All right, let's, um, let's hear the piece. Land is the name of the song from the album This Land by Theo Blackman and the Westerlies.
The song is called Land, and it is a track from the new album, This Land, by the Westerlies and Theo Blackman, um, with whom we are speaking on this uh, This Land listening party. Uh, everyone's here, and um, if you're watching at home or wherever you're watching from and have a question, just post it online. We'll see if we can get to it before we wrap things up. We haven't yet heard from Chloe or Willem. Um, Chloe, the, the album really does have, as, as Theo and Andy were telling us earlier, or Theo and Riley actually, that you know th there is a theme, there is a kind of animating idea behind the whole record. Um, but it also sounds like it was an idea that sort of grew in the telling. So what was the process like of, you know, collecting all these songs and then winnowing down to the ones that you wanted to put on the record? <clears throat> That's a great question. Um, when we were up in residency at Yellow Barn in Putney, Vermont, um, we had two weeks up there that we were rehearsing like eight hours a day. And uh, all five of us were just bringing in arrangements of different things, new little scraps of ideas, just trying every little thing out. And um, it was a hard process, you know, trying to whittle down which pieces of music to use and which ones not to use but eventually i think it became very uh, a very natural process of sort of selecting these these sounds and, and and sort of thinking about it from um you know trying to have it very balanced in terms of you know we mentioned before it was sort of a uh, a bit of a response to the political climate going on in the country at the time so we didn't want it just to only be like this really jagged uh, pointed protest album, but also have like warmth uh, um, added to it. The, uh, the original idea with, with the, uh, the program was, was sort of going off of the idea of both resistance and refuge. Mm. So, um, so we, we tried to make sure we, we address both of those sorts of, of sounds and, um, you know, like you look for the union labels, very, very pointed, but we also have a track like grandma or, uh, another holiday, which sort of goes along with that sort of refuge sound, I think, a little bit more. Right. And similarly, in the composers who are represented, traditional Americana sounds, newly composed pieces by some of you folks, and, you know, uh, a kind of smorgasbord of songs from Joni Mitchell and Woody Guthrie and Bertolt Brecht and and at this point, Willem, um, I want to ask you about one of a couple of Woody Guthrie songs that are on the record, and that is Tear the Fascists Down. It's short, not particularly sweet. Um, where, you know, where did you find this? Why did this make the cut? Uh, I think as a band, we've always had a sort of secret soft spot for country and folk music. And when we were thinking about artists that represented the tradition of American political music, um, oftentimes you think about the 60s and all the tumult of that era and the way it was reflected in the music of that time. Uh, but then you trace it back one step further and uh, all roads, or maybe many roads, if not all roads, lead back to Woody Guthrie. So we, we thought it, we'd be remiss if we didn't include some of his music. Um, and, you know, the word fascism has been thrown out around a lot these days in the, our current political climate. Uh, so it, it sort of felt fitting in that way and that it could it could speak to the moment. But I, I think uh, his song Tear Down the Fascists is interesting because it's you would never think of Woody Guthrie as a warmonger. But if you go back and read the lyrics, it's actually very uh, in, in favor of the action that the Allied forces were taking at the time in, in World War II and tearing down uh, Hitler's fascism. Um, and I always think that's just sort of an interesting tidbit about, you know, what we know of Woody and, and the music yeah. he's created and uh, how the lyrics of that song contrast with it to, to some extent or maybe show a different side of him. Uh, and one that was sort of proud of his country. You know, he, he's, he's speaking of a lot of pride in, in the United States and what they were doing at the time. Um, and then from a musical perspective, it it just felt right to sort of punctuate some of the big dark sound worlds with something a little more peppy. And I think that's what the, uh, the Guthrie songs serve to do on the record. Well, it's, it's also worth pointing out, you know, Woody Guthrie, the so-called Dust Bowl balladeer, was a Brooklyn resident for uh, a, a fairly long time and wrote, mm -hmm. are you familiar with his song, Old Man Trump? Yes, it was just recovered in, uh, or uncovered in recent years. Yeah, yeah. really interesting find. 
a, a song for folks who haven't heard it that is not about Donald, but Donald's dad, Fred. And, and you know, Woody Guthrie takes a, 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 a view with a very gimlet eye at uh, the, the father Trump's uh, treatment of minorities in his uh, housing units in, in New York City at the time. It's, it's pretty scathing stuff. And uh, I also don't, I don't believe that the melody was found for that song. I think it was just the lyrics to, yeah. to, to our knowledge. I don't know if you've heard otherwise. John. Well, there, there, there are, I, I mean, there are literally hundreds of lyrics, as you probably know, which uh, Nora Guthrie, Woody's daughter, has been distributing to bands like the Klezmatics and, um, um, oh God, Wilco and, you know, folks like that to, to set to music. So I, I think you're right. I think old man Trump has been set by someone other than Woody Guthrie, but it is his, his little screed against the senior <laughs> Trump that uh, that's at the heart of that. So uh, anyway, all of that is simply to say that Woody Guthrie deserves his place, or in this case, places on the record. Uh, this is one of a couple of Woody Guthrie tunes on the album called This Land. Let's hear Tear the Fascists Down. Tear the Fascists Down is a song by Woody Guthrie, one of a couple on the new record called This Land by the Westerlies and Theo Blackman. And uh, Theo, I mentioned before that, you know, there's a Joni Mitchell song, there's a Phil Klein tune, American composer based here in New York. There's a Bertolt Brecht song. Was that uh, was that your doing? Oh, maybe it was. <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> My hero. Um, yeah, absolutely. you've sung some of his other a material. lot, yeah, a lot of his other material. Um, yeah, so this... and, and you know, if you're going to do an album on this theme of protest, resistance, refuge, you know, just as uh, Willem was saying, you know, many roads lead back to Woody Guthrie, many other roads lead back to Bertolt Brecht, yeah, and Kurt Weill, and uh. uh Hans Eisler. Hans Eisler and Paul Dessau, who's a song we've done. I did a record of uh, actually called Songs of Love and War, Peace and Exile, which were s similarly but differently uh, themed. Um, and so I'm very, I'm very fond of those songs, especially the Hans Eisler songs, because they're very clear and simple and mm -hmm. almost like folk songs, pop songs for the people. And he wanted the common man to be able to sit at home at the piano and sing these songs. So he wrote fairly melodic uh, and uh, very accessible music, despite being a, a student of Schoenberg's. Mm -hmm. uh, and Eisler, is he the one who wrote the East German National Anthem? Yes, or? yes, yes, he is. But okay. he didn't write this, uh, the, the song that we recorded. That was Paul Dessau. Right. Um, and he wrote, this was a, ch it's a children's choir uh, song that we recorded. Mm -hmm. So, um, Riley, when when the four of you as the Westerlies are taking music that was not written specifically for this quartet of brass instruments, do you find that there are some types of music that are just better suited to your instruments than others? Or you at this point, can you make most anything work? I I think we we like to hope we can make most anything work. Um, some things definitely push us more than others. Um, but I, I do very much remember our first reading of the this Brecht piece and um, having a lot of difficulty with it just because so much of how we cultivate our 
sound and our arrangements in the brass sense of things is, is pretty far from the traditional classical uh, sense of brass. And reading a piece like that felt very classical and it, it felt like we were being pushed in that direction. So uh, that was one where we really sort of had to try to flip it on its head. And I think it, it came from, you know, there are all these sort of uh, harmonic resolutions that happened throughout that piece in this sort of uh, churning way. And we just started looping them and finding uh, ways to draw out this feeling that uh, Brecht creates um, with the words and, and match the music um, mm. in that way. And, and then Theo started improvising. And, and that was, you know, that was one of those moments where it felt like we were really trying to uh, find a sonic vocabulary to accompany the text of, of this song and, and the album in general. Um, and that's something that we really look up to Theo for. And, and I think as, as, as much as the text tells the story of what this record is, I think we hope that the, those sonic elements tell another narrative as well. Okay. Um, I have a sort of a follow-up question, uh, Chloe. Uh, as I listen to some of the the tone painting that Riley is referring to in the way you guys arrange these these songs, I'm. Uh, it's, I don't want to get too deep in the weeds here, but how many different kinds of mutes are you using? Because it sounds like, especially in the trumpet section, that there's quite a bit of of change going on. Yeah. Um... I think in this album in particular, I mean, in general, both Riley and I have tons and tons of mutes, you know, that create lots and lots of different sounds. Um, but I believe we're only using a few types of mutes on this record. And Riley, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we're just using a, a cup mute and a straight mute, which are actually pretty standard kinds of mutes. Um, and everything else you're hearing, all the all the sort of textures and everything else is, is coming more from extended technique or things that we're doing with our valves to sort of manipulate the amount of air pressure that's going through that creates different sorts of timbres and things like that. Um, but in terms of mutes themselves, it's just a just a couple of, of, of different different mutes, the straight mute and the cut mute. But uh, so you mentioned extended techniques. Um, it, when you use those, I guess you don't need the full arsenal of of gear because you know you're you're altering the sound considerably just through, uh, again, things like embouchure and and. I, I mean, I've even seen trumpeters play their instruments without the mouthpiece. You know, <laughs> I, don't, yeah. I don't know if you have you gone that far. <laughs> we have gone that far in, in some instances. It's very hard to control the sound with that, but there's a lot of really interesting um, effects that can be achieved that way. And uh, I mean, in, in rehearsals and everything, we we like to sort of, as Andy mentioned, dive into just like things that might sound ridiculous right off the bat that end up turning into something else that. Um, maybe the idea of playing without a mouthpiece sounds ridiculous, but maybe that's the perfect sound for for this section that that we we wouldn't have unlocked. Although I do recall one experiment where we all flooded our horns with water, and Theo right. was gurgling. <laughs> all right, we, I was we thinking were, of the same thing. I remember we were drenched <laughs> after like ten minutes, and we we're like, okay, that didn't work. That one didn't make the cut. <laughs> It was a and, cool sound though, like all this gargling inside the horn that you can't control. There's a lot of uncertainty. ASMR's <laughs> evil twin, the sound yes. of <laughs> water <laughs> gurgling through brass pipes. <laughs> the spa edition. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Andy, um, we do have a live performance uh, on, on the program. I just have to ask, how, how are you guys doing this? <laughs> so uh, this this is a system that the Westerlies have been using for, it's depressing to say, almost a year now to play together remotely. Um, for the entirety of the pandemic, we have been quarantined apart in various states, m sort of moving around for various reasons. But we have continued to work together recording and also it's really important to us to continue performing live so none of the existing systems for playing together remotely like jack trip or jam kazam or some of the things that a lot of folks are using work 
if you are thousands of miles apart. So we developed this sort of ragtag system that uses a few different tools in ways that they're not intended to be used, but it allows us to play together in real time and hear each other and have the sound quality be decent. So what's gonna happen is we're all gonna mute ourselves on Zoom and then hop on this other system that we have running in the background. And then the sound that's going through that will get piped out through the live stream and you will see our video from Zoom. But uh, it's like the first phonograph. You are part of this moment. <laughs> <laughs> but um, full disclosure, we have never done it with more than four people. So this is an experiment bringing Ooh, in Theo to the equation. And sizzle. every Ooh. new participant adds sort of a uh, exponential factor of uncertainty and uh, risk. Complexity. Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay. So the possibility of humiliating failure looms <laughs> large. Indeed. <laughs> no but pressure. That's, that's the beauty of live performance. <laughs> so um, we're going to... Uh, switch over to that system. Um, See you on the other end. So you'll watch us. But before you do, Theo, just yeah. quickly introduce mm -hmm. the song for oh, us. Oh, Wade in the Water. The Underground Railroad anthem that uh, we recorded and now are going to play live. All right. Let's, uh, let's hear th and watch as Theo Blackman and the Westerlies perform Wade in the Water. It's on the new record called This Land, but you're now going to get a live performance, technology willing. Here they are. Give us 30 seconds to get this sorted out. I think I'm now getting Theo. We will play momentarily. Take it away.
Did it work? Well, very nicely done. <laughs> <laughs> Theo Blackman and the Westerlies <clears throat> with a version of Wade in the Water. And there is a version of that on the album called This Land. And I am strangely hearing myself from 10 seconds ago. <laughs> uh, that's strange, but in the general scheme of things, I guess not, not too bad if that's the only tech glitch I'm going to experience. Um, so, uh, as I say, that, that album, uh, This Land, includes a version of Wade in the Water that is similarly, Theo, similarly restrained and kind of poignant, uh, you know, so it's, it's in keeping with the, the feeling of, of this record of offering both a sense of urgency and the call to action on the one hand and a, a kind of place of solace and, and mm -hmm. comfort on the other. Yeah. Uh, I, I think, I, I think it's, it's a job really well done. And, um, you know, the five of you, uh, you make beautiful music together. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, John. It is a great honor to have you here. It's just, I'm, I always say this to you, but it is always bizarre to see you because I hear you pretty much every day. And there you are. There's the voice that's in my house all the time. Yeah, yeah. It's just and fantastic. This is, this is where you use the old face made for radio joke. <laughs> <laughs> No? At least you're okay. you're compensating with your Zoom background. Yes, right. My uh, Yayoi Kusama um, installation background. <laughs> it actually moves, but I thought I would spare our viewers the full psychedelic trippy Zoom <laughs> backdrop. Um, the album This Land is out now. It is a real beauty. Uh, Riley, Andy, Willem, Chloe, Thanks to the four of you and Theo, the five of you, for making the record, for sharing it with us tonight. Uh, this has been a lot of fun. Thanks very much. Thank you. You're Thank the you, best. John. Thank you so much, Thank John. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. And thanks to all of you for watching. <laughs> good night. Thanks, everyone. Uh, we are going to say good night. I want to thank all of our co-presenters for this event this evening. New Sounds, Jazz Times, Caramore the Norton Center at Center College, Second Inversion, the Royal Room, Jazz Vitoria, Choate Rosemary Hall, and Yellow Barn. Thank you for uh, coming on board with us. And we are going to say goodnight with uh, about 10 more minutes of music from the album. But you've seen enough of our faces. We are going to say goodbye. And we thank you for tuning in. Take care. I can't hear you. Houses should not burn. Nobody should know about bombers. The night should be for sleeping. Living should not be punishment. Mothers should not cry. Nobody should kill anyone. Everyone should build something. Then you can trust everybody. The youth should be able to achieve something. And so should the old. Soll für